Welcome back. So in this character structure assessment video, we have a treat. We have someone who displays a classic endomorph or masochist. Now, if you've been following along, we're doing character analysis based on the work of Wilhelm Reich, which determines the way we look and the way we behave in life. Uh, you look like what you are is sort of the thing. That's why it's called character structure. And each of these character structures has a body type and a personality. And today we have a case study where someone is like spot on in both body type and personality when it comes to one of these character structures. And so I mentioned it before, we're talking about in psychoanalytical terms, the masochist. Now, I'm trying to stay away from the psychoanalytical terms because they're a little crazy. Um, you don't want to go around calling people masochist and psychopath and stuff like that. So I've sort of adopted the somatic or uh, somatotype titles, but I'm just calling them neo-somatotypes because with the somatotypes, I think uh, there's a tendency for people to look at them and believe in that, that, that that's what you are. And so being in the bodybuilding, lifting space, a lot of people are like, oh, well, if you're an endomorph, well, then you're just stuck in endomorph and then the, that's there. There's nothing you can do about it. You're just going to be a fat boy for the rest of your life. But we know that's not true, that there's some room for play. Also, with these somatotypes, um, there's a lot of... There's a lot of association with it. So you got people who are like, oh, it's bullshit. And they just won't listen to anything. And then you got people who are like, perhaps thinking, yeah, this is it. I'm stuck. And they use it as their, their fate. But I found that the work of Wilhelm Reich, uh, Alexander Lowen and bioenergetics gives us a, a bit more of a malleable look at the individual, mainly because it, it really brings the psyche into the whole equation. Uh, it's not just, hey, that's your body, that's your genetics, that's what you are. It's, hey, it's the way you're thinking. It's the way you're approaching life. It's the energy dynamics in your body, your ability to express yourself, your inability to express yourself, or your stuckness in self-expression. And that, we know, is changeable. So uh, let's dive in. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some of the typical symptoms, I guess you could say, characters character traits, better way to put it, of a classic masochist. I'm not going to spend too much time, although I did have a fun time <laughs> writing all this stuff out. I'm going to rattle through it really quickly because I think what's going to be really fun here is for you guys to watch the video of our case study and then start thinking about where that those these, these bubbles might be checked off. And then we're going to go around on the end and we're going to say, okay, does he check off here? Does he check off here? Does he check off here? Check out there. And in fact, he not only checks off all these boxes, so the answer is going to be yes, but it'll be fun to see how that happens. He displays a, a very interesting dynamic that I've noticed with myself as a sort of a masochist. Um, and, he, and he does it. And that's why I was like, I have to choose this one. It's a great case study. So real quick, masochist slash endomorph. The body type holds in. And so holding in is just, you can just imagine, if you, if you take in and hold, you're going to be puffed up. If, there, if there's only in, inhalation and no expiration or uh, exhalation, then there's going to be like a filling up, right? Taking in, very difficult to let out. And so the, the, the way the body, the energy dynamics is structured is such, you know, using this star symbol once again, I know a lot of people are confused about that. It's not, it's not what you think it is. The, these, this, these two intersecting uh, triangles are evident of different types of energy dynamics, ascending and descending, or the liberating and the condensing. There's a lot going on here, right? We liberate through here, but we take in through here. I'm not going to get into it too much. I could do something on these again another time. But the energy, if you notice, the, the, the head is kind of stuck in, the limbs get stuck in, and the body, the middle of the body fills up. So you'll get like short, seemingly short, like, you know, if you look at the person, it's like, wow, it looks like the arms are pulled in. Head oftentimes is pulled in and the legs pulled in. So this person holds in. 
you almost think of like somebody going to do like a, uh, a, a, a heavy powerlifting squat. You know, you do the Valsalva maneuver and you do this. And so you're going to get that with the energy. If there's a lot of it, it's just stuck. And you're going to see how this plays out in the person's life. Um, also, in terms of the dynamics, if you're to turn this person sideways, it's the flexor muscles that's holding the person, holding that energy in. So the inability to express out, because this is the top of the body, so I'm looking at this dynamic right here, and even the ability to relax down low. And I'm, I'm literally talking from the top of the spine to the bottom of the spine. So the turning in on oneself from up top, you'll see in a sort of... Just remember, this is what they're doing. This is what the masochist, like if I'm, if I'm exaggerating these energy dynamics, it's, it's like this, right? So turn in, but then also it's not like this and then the butt is out like a, like an ape, right? The, the butt gets tucked in also. So it's like both areas, both ends of the alimentary canal turn in on themselves. And this person has a tendency to turn in on themselves. They turn on themselves. And that's why it starts to shorten the trunk, middle collapse. So the middle area juts this way because if you squeeze, right? Think about if you squeeze a toothpaste thing from the top and the bottom, right? The top and the bottom, and there's a tube and it has two, two, two places to come out, two screws on the top. And you squeeze it or you turn it and you squeeze it, it's going to want to like bust out through the middle. So this person, they, they usually look like they're busting out through the middle oftentimes either anatomically or subcutaneously. Would that make sense? Either it's like the fat is just jiggling out this way, pushing out this way, or oftentimes the rib cage and the torso will almost like extend that way. Um, high inner charge, weak outer charge. So there's all that energy that's being charged up in the middle, but an inability to really go get what they want. Use those arms, use your power like a psychopath would, right? Go get it! They're, ooh, they're, they're turned in, so it's a weak charge out there, big charge in the middle, underdeveloped musculature, unless they get involved with lifting, which our friend does, which is cool. While we're here with the energy dynamics, the physical energy dynamics, I, I, I'm so excited I have to just get it out. You'll notice that our friend also, well, here's a typical behavior for this body type because now that we're talking about the mechanics like literally the shape of the body it's amazing how the shape of the body determines how you behave in life it's nuts right like but it makes perfect sense form equals function right and so what we end up having a lot of times with this someone's turned in on themselves but they got a lot of power what do you think will happen like with that tube of toothpaste if you if you squeeze both ends and you turn it like this and you bend it like that, right? I wish I had a toothpaste, right? You turn it like that, what's gonna happen? Every once in a while, it's gonna burst out. And so what'll end up happening sometimes with this individual is that they'll just be a masochist, they'll be a masochist, they'll be a masochist, and then one day they'll just go, bang, I'm alive, I'm a beast, I can do anything. And then it doesn't last. They come back in, and oftentimes, after that coming back in, there's shame about going out because it's like, I belong back in this turned in place. It's, I, I'm most comfortable here. And then we'll look at ourselves when we were acting, acting out and be like, oh, oh, I don't like that guy, right? So that's, that's but that's the classic masochi, uh, masochist endomorph dynamic. Now, some of the things to uh, consider with regard to the development of this person is that it happens, this, this sort of energy dynamic takes fold between the ages of one and a half and three years old, usually around potty training, and the injury, right, and this may or may not be the case, once again, this is a soft science. A lot of times it's epigenetics, it's genetics, whatever the case may be, but there's, you, there's a good chance, good chance, because character structure is pretty spot on, it's very good. That there was that there's a sense of fear, shame, and humiliation mostly around potty tra training. That age is the age of autonomy. So it's a matter. So it's it's both autonomy and potty training, which they're both kind of the same thing. 
Because if you don't have autonomy over the functions of your body, you will then have shame about the functions of your body. So it can, it can and think about the tube. It could happen through the mouth and it could happen through the anus. That's what, that's what happens, it gets turned in. So it can happen through the mouth by being told, shut up, do what mommy tells you. Ah, quiet, do what I tell you. I don't wanna hear anything. Or you start crying, stop that crying. So it's a closing down here, so this gets shut up. So that ability to allow the energy to blah, come out like it would be, you know, in orals are very much, they're very open this way, but orals are more like, but give me something, right? They're very lippy and mouthy and friendly like this. Um, the psychopath is more charismatic, like, ha, here it goes, boom, right? And I'm just talking natural energy dynamics. People can become whatever they want by practice and demonstrate different ways. But for the masochist, at that, that for those formative years, there may have been a desire to say something, speak something, go do something, touch something, climb on something, do something, and it was just constantly, ah, ah, ah. So you get like the helicopter parent, which I think we're gonna sort of talk a little bit about before. The helicopter mom, helicopter moms create a lot of masochists and other things too, so everybody's different, but it's because the kid wants to go, but mommy's fear, and that's what it is. It's you're adopting your mother's fear. Usually it's the mother. And in this case, I'm going to say so too. A lot of fam I've learned a lot about family stuff, or I've learned a lot about the families of the guys who have sent in these uh, case studies. By the way, thank you guys for sending them. I'm having a lot of fun with these. So potty training, self-expression, autonomy, people pleasing. So it's a matter of, well, mom doesn't want me to poop right now. Right, so let's go down to the other side, right? Yep, the bottom. There's no autonomy over the bottom half of the body. It's you have to go to the potty right now, even though you don't have to, right? Just sit on the potty and you don't move there until you poop. And the kid's like trying to like squeeze and it's like, I don't have to poop. But you know what happens, right? And anybody who has kids knows you take the kid off the potty, you let him go, and five minutes later, poop, <laughs> right? And rather than allowing that to be a sort of a natural thing that kids, that, you know, all right, you're, you're, you're learning, right? It becomes a um, shameful thing. Look at you. All that poop. You stink. Why didn't you just poop when I told you? Ah! Right? And so this is the trauma. <laughs> I'm going to make a video about trauma later. But all of us are trauma. And that's a trauma. It's a trauma that leads to fear shame and humiliation that causes the energy dyna dynamics of the, the flexor, holder, inner. And just think about it too, holding it in. Like you ever have to hold in your poop? And you start to create spasms in the pelvic floor and anus, all kinds of problems. So this person doubts the right to act. It's all about autonomy. And, as, and if, you have, if, if you doubt your, ability, your right to act, you hold in. And what will that do? Low energy. A lot of times these people, they have low energy. Um, the, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions about each of the archetypes. You know, that's another way I could describe them, but character structures. And, and one is that, you know, the masochist is, you know, they're usually fat, so they're lazy and uh, sloppy. It, it, it goes a little deeper than that. They really don't have the energy because they're fighting themselves. All the time, like all the energy is being wasted on self masochism, beating themselves up. That's why it's called a masochist. You're literally beating yourself up. And then a lot of the, you know, the, the, the ugliness, you know, sloppy, you know, don't take care of themselves. A lot of that has to do with the shame and not wanting to to show themselves as awesome as they are. So a lot of times they make themselves ugly. Masochists, will, they'll do ugly things or just be disheveled and make themselves uglier than they really are for you know various reasons. They turn in on themselves. Doesn't take action, low will, so that's that. Illusion, you know, this is what they're, this is, this is the defense mechanism of the mind. This is like what they think, but it necessarily isn't necessarily true, that I'm trying to please you, right? I'm trying to please mommy by not doing the thing. I'm trying to please mommy by pooping when I don't need to, right? Uh, as a result, because they're the, the, 
now they become a habitual people pleaser, you're doing things against your own will. A lot of times with, peop with, with people in general, but like masochists, is that they'll do stuff, but not willingly. They'll be like begrudging, like, well, I'll do it. And it's not because it, they can hold resentment and be passive aggressive, oh, totally passive aggressive. These are probably the most passive aggressive people to other people, but it's not about the other person, it's about themselves. It really is about themselves. So whining and complaining because it's like, why do I have to do this? It's not fair. And just think about how it's not fair when you're told you got to poop even though you don't got to poop. Or that you pooped yourself and, you know, became a problem. Or it's not fair that someone's shoving food down your throat like, open up, choo-choo train. Right? It, it, so they, there's a lot of like, I'll do it, but, right? Feels inadequate. Passive aggressive. I even wrote that there here. Passive aggressive. They will bite their tongue. They won't speak up oftentimes when things aren't going their way. And as a result, they'll, they'll do the thing that they need to do, but they'll sabotage it in the process. They, this person has strong psychic power. I don't know how else to say it. The energy is so boiling up so much on the inside that they could create things outside happen that they didn't actually do. My mom is a masochist, one of the strongest masochists I know. I probably get a lot of my personality from her for sure. And my mom will, if she don't like something, she'll bite her tongue. She won't say nothing. She'll, you know, she'll go along with it. Mm -hmm, okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm, sure. Yeah. But strange things then happen. Oh, there was a car accident down the block. So now I guess I can't do the thing. Oh, there was an accident or just a thing will happen. Like, oh, what do you know? That thing happened that, that I, now I don't have to do it. So there's the, the thing, it's just interesting to watch. And once you start to recognize people and see these patterns, it's like, Clockwork, and so I know that I, I know that about my mom. Like, if there's something she don't like, she'll resist it, and she won't make it not happen. Her ener her psychic energy will sabotage it with something outside out there. Now that's that's classic masochist. That's not, that's not just people I love and know. That's that's the way masochists behave. Uh, intrusive, controlling parent, parent enmeshment. So once again, like I was saying before, intrusive meaning like not allowing the kid to express itself naturally, especially in like safe environments, right? Like helicopter parents just don't want to see their kids do things, right? It's like, my parents used to let me just, I climbed up on things and we like, I don't know, my parents just let me do whatever I want when I was a kid, like just as an active kid. I remember parents of the kids that I would play with were like, oh, like you, no, don't go up there. And they would look at my parents and my mom be up there and just doing stuff and I was fearless. And I, and I didn't have a parent that was a helicopter parent in this way, right? Enmeshment. So, you know, I have to, I can't pretend like I haven't watched the video already. And I know a lot about our case study. Um, and a lot of you guys, like I haven't, I haven't listened to too many yet that have had a good relationship with their dads. And it's not a matter of, the, of not having the good relationship with the dad, but the enmeshment with the mother. Because oftentimes when the father is... I don't want to say absent, but uh, absent, right? Like he's not there all the time, right up in your grill, like, you know, super dad. Um, he's working. He's just doing what he's got to do. He's, you know, he's getting shit done. A lot of times we get addicted to mommy's love. And mommy likes when you're addicted to mommy's love. Mommy's love when women love when you're addicted to them. They love and they resent you, especially if you're an adult. But they will control because they can control you. It's just, you know, that's just... Sexual dynamics, you know, it's just what it is. It's like these are facts, like those are those facts, general facts. So there will be an enmeshment when dad is is not living up to mommy's hope, right? Or he's just not there and mommy's kind of left on her own and she, she's just with you, boy, you then become the substitute. You become a substitute husband in a way, a substitute puppet, like, you know, a thing to play with. And so the whole controlling and intrusive thing uh, often leads to a, you know, like, oh, I love my mom, oh, a very loving relationship, but it's incestual in a way. And I'm not saying it's sexually incestual, it's psychically incestual. 
And then so the next one, feeling stuck. Just think about the energy dynamics. They're stuck. They're turned in on themselves, right? Stuck into themselves, choked off at the throat. Uh, and words, it's hard for them to put words into feelings or feelings into words. Hard, hard time expressing oneself. And so that's it, right? I mean, that's the whole, the whole thing about the masochist is the self-expression. So you know, they have a hard time expressing themselves. And then they'll... they'll just grow resentful, passive aggressive, and you know, hold it in until they have a heart attack. <laughs> heart disease is a big one for masochists. And you know, it might be a matter of you know, being overweight and fat, but a lot of it is the energy dynamics. The heart is, you just turn in on your heart. Suffering confused eyes. Very, unlike the psychopath, right, which the masochist and the psychopath, I keep referring to the two of them because if you remember on the spectrum, they're both on the left end of the spectrum. You got, you know, I'll go, I don't want to get too deep into it, but the masochist and the psychopath are similar in that the oral and the, and the um, schizoid are similar, right? Ecto, ecto-1, ecto-2, and then you got um, the masochist, which is uh, mesomorph with the, I'm sorry, the uh, endomorph with the mesomorph. The endomorph with the mesomorph, they can kind of, they can, they can, they can you'll be predominantly one, but they can dance with the other. And so, Unlike the psychopath, unless they allow themselves to, the psychopath's eyes are very dynamic and very like, could be mean or can be like elated. It's suffering and confused. They're just apologetic, apologetic looking eyes. Oh, very friendly people in a passive aggressive way, right? Because there's an inner rage. It's funny because these two kind of go, they're two sides of the same coin. Inner rage, but shyness. Shy on the outside, but rageful on the inside. So what you end up seeing on the outside, because remember the energy is not, it, it, it's not on the surface, it's all on the inside. So the eyes look sort of, hmm, ho-hum, poor me, right? They're not saying poor me, but the eyes say poor me. Now it sounds like it's all bad stuff. And it's always easier to point out the, like the flaws in a character structure. And I know we all, you know, this is why we, it's, that's why I like using the neo-somatotype language. I'll get better at using those instead of, you know, the character structure language, but the character structure is where it comes from, so I have to say it. Um, there are gifts that come with each one of these types. It's not all just bad. It's easy to point out the bad because, like, hey, then we can attack it, we can fix it. But there's a lot of good stuff there. And the whole idea is, once again, the goal is what? Not to be something you're not, of course, be the strongest version of yourself, Elliot Hulse, psychopath, right? Even the way I said it, right? Because I'm fighting for the little guy. I want you to become the strongest version of yourself, right? Become the strongest version of yourself, which I can't help but to just want to say more accurately, be the most charismatic version of yourself. Allow the charismatic gifts to rise in you by getting out the way, walking in grace. We want to be as graceful as possible with what we got. An elephant can be just as graceful as a deer, right? If it's given the opportunity and the training and the, you know, whatever. Steady, patient, diplomatic. These are steady, patient, diplomatic people. They're diplomatic, meaning like, you know, they're, they're not going to fight. They're not going to get in between anybody or anything. They're not, you know, ma manipulative, but more in a passive aggressive way. They're trying to stay friendly. They're trying to stay uneven because th there's already enough shit bubbling up on the inside that they just can't handle it. It's just like, ah, better have peace. Let's just have peace. And so steady, patient, diplomatic facts over abstractions. Um, they're very practical. You just think about uh, the heaviness of the body. They're very grounded people. Unlike this your schizoid who's like all oh, very intelligent and creative and abstract, the, mat, the psychopath also has a tendency to do that too because of the energy that's up high. Both of them have energy that's up high. The oral can be very abstract in their loving. Oh, they fall in love and, they, you know, romantic. And you're like trying to look at like what they're in love with. And you're like, oh, it's very abstract. It's not back based on facts. The masochist is just like, it is what it is. You know, I'm a this and you're a that and let's do it. Right? So there you have it, man. Let's take a look at our case study and see where we can check off some of these boxes. This should be fun. Give me a second here. All right. Huh? 
Tak. Thought I could swap these easier, but there we go. All right. Shortcuts make things long sometimes. All right, here we go. Hey, what's up, Elliot? My name is Cameron. I'm from Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, I'm a huge stoner. I'm 40 to 50 pounds overweight, or at least I've gained 40 to 50 pounds in the past year. Uh, I recently just turned 30. I got engaged on my 30th birthday, and I have a two-month-old daughter. Um, you've been a huge influence on, on my life since 2012. Uh, I went to Full Sail University in Orlando, studying pretty much for the music industry. And watching your videos really transformed my life when I felt very, very alone. I was 12 hours away from my family, being 18, 19 years old, all by myself trying to figure out the world. So I went from being 310 pounds to 170, 180 pounds in about six or seven months. I did a crash diet where pretty much I just ate Subway every day, a six inch sub. Uh, and then I also did a lot of cardio. After college, I was big into bodybuilding, lifting weights, chugging protein shakes, and uh, pretty much just building this big ego that I absolutely hated. By the time I was 23 years old, I got into pro hormones, which are now banned. Uh, that's caused a lot of problems in my life now that I'm 30, where I have higher estrogen, low testosterone, and higher liver enzymes. But of course, the person I was then, the big ego, you couldn't tell me nothing. When I met my fiance at one of my DJ events, uh, we started hanging out a lot, and it was my off season from weddings and events. And then we started drinking a lot and going out. And then next thing you know, I'm neglecting the gym. Now I've got 40 to 50 pounds on me that I really just need to lose. And it's not all about the weight loss. It's about becoming the strongest version of myself, becoming successful in all my business goals, uh, being the best person I can possibly be for my clients, and being the best dad I can be. Growing up, my relationship with my parents was different than most households. Uh, my parents never argued, they never cussed, they didn't fight, or at least we never saw that. And still to this day, I've never seen my parents yell at each other. My dad's never cussed at my mom or anything like that. Uh, the only downside is my dad worked a lot. He was always gone. I never really saw him growing up, so I resent him now because we didn't spend any time together growing up. Literally, he had to support a family of three with my mom being a stay-at-home mom. So now I sort of understand, but there, there's just no relationship with us today. Uh, as far as with my mom, she and I are very, very close. She's somebody I can call. It's like a best friend that I can you know, talk to about anything and get advice for. Uh, my biggest issue right now in life is I've been living with my grandfather for the past four years in a basement apartment, and he recently just passed away, and I've got to find somewhere else to live, and my credit is com completely tanked. I, I have no idea how I'm going to get approved for an apartment or what I'm going to do for my family, and really just want to get my life together. I want to know what I can do to get physically in shape, have the energy, have the motivation, have the desire to get up and actually do something with my life, um, build my business, achieve all of my goals, be the best dad that I can possibly be to my little girl. And thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I put some other information that's in the form, but essentially that's a lot about me. Done. Cool. So, man, what we'll do is we'll go through this really quickly just to point out where we noticed some of the similarities. And then I have some advice for you, Cameron, uh, some things that I think will be helpful to you. And I have an offer for you as well. So let's uh, go back to the top here. So with regard to the, the physical dynamics, uh, it's very evident, right? And if you notice when he turns to his side, all right, let's see if I can, let me pull this back up really quickly so you can literally just see what I'm talking about when he turns, even his back. 
you notice his back. Look at his, look at his arms. Remember I talked about how the, the, the person is turned in on themselves? And then the arms almost look short. They're almost like pulled up. Even his neck. Hey, what's up, Elliot? My name is Cameron. I'm from Lynchburg, Virginia. So the, the, the physical dynamics are very evident, you know, from the, from, the, from the bulging in the middle to the turning in on oneself. And so we know he holds in. Uh, shame, fear, humiliation, autonomy, people pleasing. Uh, you know, he does give the suffering confused eye look. This is when the injury happens. Let's check this one. So I don't know what that experience was like. He probably doesn't remember what that experience is like, but based on what he says about his mom, she was probably, there's definitely some enmeshment going on there. She probably started controlling him around that age. I'm just gonna go with checking it. Humili fear of humiliation, uh, I know I can, I can sort of sense that. Doubts the right to act, low energy. You can even hear the way he talks. It's kind of like apologizing. Weak will. Now, this is the cool thing. He had a strong will for a season, but then turned back in and turned away and then judged that guy. And so I have something to say about that in a moment. Doubts the right to act, low self-esteem, you know, doesn't take action. Um, you, that's, the general, that's his general way of being, right? Low energy, low self-esteem, low will doesn't take action, right? And so he doesn't mean he can't take action. It doesn't mean he never has taken action, but just a general behavior. So I'm gonna give that one a check too. The illusion, I'm trying to please you, whining and complaining. He's not trying to whine and complain. And this is not about ever about like knocking someone, but just the way he talks is kind of like whiny, complaining, right? Feels inadequate. Like you could just see, I mean, he's in the bathroom. You can see he's feeling a little inadequate. Passive aggressive, I don't know if he's passive aggressive, but he's a masochist, so he probably is. Illusion, I'm trying to please you, right? I'm trying to, trying to be a nice guy, I would say yes. Intrusive and controlling parent, I don't know how con intrusive and controlling, but definitely, I, you know, I made point, I have to point out the enmeshment, right? You know, your, your mom's, my, my mom's my best friend, and uh, I could talk to her about anything. Um, not that that's a bad thing, but it may be a little, too enmeshed, you and your mom, and you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to ruin that. You know, I'm sure you love your mom. I'm sure your mom loves you. I'm just trying to point out some things. You don't have to, you don't have to deal with that. We can deal with it right at the body. And I'm going to tell you how in a moment. Feels stuck and moody, chucked off at the throat, suffering, confused eyes. Yup. I mean, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Look here. I'll show. Her. There's a good. I just paused right on a nice. You're suffering confused, look at the next suffering confused look. You know? That's our guy, you know, and we love him, but that's what he's dealing with. The outer shell is of shyness, rage on the inside. You know that guy has rage on the inside because when he started hitting the gym like a beast and doing a bunch of cardio, whatever, he was letting that rage be exercise. Steady, patient, diplomatic. You could tell he's a nice guy. He's not trying to cause any problems or anything like that, you know, and so that's it. So this is, this is all like fine and good. This is all well and dandy. This is all interesting to do character structure reading and pointing out and, you know, I don't want to say diagnosing, but pointing things out about someone. I'm getting some too much light here. But really what we want to do is help, right? Like how can we help this guy? And so a couple things. First of all, I'm going to eliminate some of your excuses because we got to drop the baggage before we start running. Uh, the whole pro hormone thing, bro. I'm sure that has a little bit to do with your situation. Eating processed meat, and bread, and running on a treadmill can screw up your hormones just as much or worse than taking pro hormones. And coming from a guy who's used legit hormones in the past, I, I bounce back. You know, I was, I was on TRT last year, this year, I'm fine. I'm, you know, I'm not like a guy on TRT, but I'm not screwed up. I can lose weight, I can gain weight, I can, I feel all right, right? So physiologically, that's not a, I don't think that's a legit, legitimate excuse. But I'm not telling you what to do, because I know masochists don't like being told what to do. So I would just, have you consider that? Have you considered that? You decide on your own, big boy. So dropping that. 
you know what to do in order to lose weight, but you gotta do it in a better way. You know how I know you know how to lose weight in a good way? Because you watched my videos when I was talking about fitness. Eating Subway sandwiches isn't a good idea to lose the weight. You can choose healthier versions of carbs and proteins and fats, right? Losing weight is not a, is not, it's not a uh, rocket science. And you know how to exercise. So I'm not gonna give you any advice on what you need to do metabolically to lose that weight. But as far as exercise is concerned, if the turning in on oneself is what's causing the masochist expansion, one of the best things that a masochist can do are powerful exercises. And one of the most powerful things you can do as an exercise uh, modality is martial arts. Go and start fucking kicking bags. Go join a Muay Thai class and just bang, 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 right? Remember I told you how the arms and the legs are pulled in? When you start like knocking shit out, like just punching and kicking and ha, 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 Ex expressing yourself, that's this opening up. That's that opening up and it's going to feel good. You're going to feel good. Don't, I wouldn't go running on treadmills. I wouldn't do any low intensity, steady state cardio. I would do sprints. Try to do things that cause you to open up, open up. You know, if you're just kind of, yeah, you lose fat, but we're talking bioenergetics here. Bioenergetically, wow, you got to open up. Apparently you're into music or something. I don't, I'm not exactly sure, but if you were in a band and you could make music, Get back into your band, get back into making music, but it's gotta be physical. It can't be like you're a DJ, right? Although DJs could be physical, right? Scratching records. It's gotta be physical, meaning like blowing into a saxophone. Think about that, you're blowing out, right? Beating drums, bang, 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 right? That's expressing yourself like a psychopath. Now, one of the things I would ask you to let go of also is your judgment of your psychopath season, meaning your, your, me, your mesomorph season, your mesomorph one season, your season of being willful, being determined, being an action taker, going and getting, not getting in your way, not feeling sorry for yourself, right? You can do that, but you can't get to that place if you resent that place. You still resent that guy. You got judgments against that, against that guy. That guy is what got you your girl. And now fat guy might lose her. I don't know for sure because I don't know you and I don't know her. But I tell you what, if that was the guy that she met and you're the guy she has now, that's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair when women change after they get married. It's not, mar it's not fair for either partner. You change, you evolve, but you don't devolve. You don't become a worse version of yourself. And carrying 40, 50, 50 pounds, hey, look, I, I like you. You seem like a nice kid, but you're not the best version of yourself with all that weight on. I'm sure you know that. You don't need me to tell you. So it's not fair to her. And, if she, and, and listen, the whole attitude, I'm, I'm trying to please you, is not going to fix your sexual dynamics. And you got a, you have a child on the way here, or a child that's just newly born. I think you said two two months, two old, two years, something like that. Two something, two weeks, two months, two years, whatever. So learn to love that version of yourself because that was a good version of yourself. In in some way, that was a better version of yourself. But you got to recapture the essence of what that was in you. What gave you the, the, the inspiration, right, to act for yourself in order to do that? Right now, you're a victim of the food. You're a victim of the drugs. Forgot to mention that, that you're, on, you're smoking weed. Uh, you're going to be a victim of your girlfriend. You're going to be a victim of your child. You're going to be a victim of all these things because you just hold it in and allow yourself to be beat up. You like being beat up. Masochists like being beat up. That version of you that is extroverted, that, that opens up and turns that energy out and gives himself to the world, 
knows what to do, knows how to do it, knows how to get what he wants. And I think you can do it again. You're only 30. The weed thing. I get it. I've been there. It has everything to do with not being willing to feel. And when you've got a lot of energy and it's all trapped on the inside and you have nowhere to express it, it's really painful. If you remember, I showed that spectrum between uh, you know, the fear and the pain spectrum. And the masochist is, is, is a pain person. Like the, 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 the schizoid is a fear, like totally fear person. Masochist is totally a, is a pain person. So you're in, you're in pain. I don't. You probably even have like a medical card because you know somewhere in your unconscious. And you know, I'm, I'm medically in pain, right? So you're taking marijuana for your pain. As long as you keep that power that you have trapped in your body, you're going to be in pain. And you're going to have to smoke weed. The minute you start expressing yourself, the minute you start shouting and kicking and exploding back out again and taking action in your life, and having a dream that's worthy of getting up every day and attacking with all your might, you're going to be in pain. So you're going to have to keep smoking weed. So the weed is just an indication that you're being a masochist. But it's also this, chicken or egg. When you're smoking weed, you can't express yourself because you're not even actually yourself. You're a numbed out version of yourself. Think about somebody who's on pain pills, right? Or like they, that's basically what it is anyway. Just think about how I was going to say it. Somebody who's like, you know, half asleep, half asleep. How well are you going to be able to express yourself? How charismatically would you be able to express yourself? It's like you're walking around with a wet towel over your head all day long. Living in a weed world, right? So... That would be good to get rid of. Now, here's my offer. I have a coaching program where we work with you on getting rid of the vices, losing weight, attacking your goals and your dreams. And if I can get a commitment from you that you're going to do what I tell you to do and you're going to stick with it, not because I told you to, Right? I get it, masochist. You won't let me tell you. Well, because you really want to and you got a good enough reason and I'd be willing to work with you. And so message me down below and let me know. And if any of you are watching this and want to work with me, go to waronvice.com. But you, Cameron, I'll let you come in for free. Because I want to see you become the you that you're supposed to be. And so that's it. That's all. Hey, if you want an analysis like this with old Uncle Yo, just click the link down below, fill out the application, and maybe I'll see you on the next show. That's it, dudes, done.